Hello and welcome to another tutorial from Moo ICT. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a balloon popping game in WPF and C Sharp. Uh, so let's just get started on it. So we have a background assigned to the canvas and we have these balloons uh, popping up. So if I click on them, see that they make a little popping sound and then they get removed from the canvas. Okay, and once you have missed a certain number of balloons, it will basically say the game is over and then we can restart the game again. So once you restart, the balloons start popping up again. So you get the little animation with the balloons and the transparency works really well in WPF. So it's, this is going to be a fun tutorial. Let's get started on it. Okay, so in this screen, click on create a new project. Let's pick WPF app. .NET Framework, click Next, call it WPF OECT and then click Create. So this is the blank view of the project. Um, before we start we need to download the game assets. So in the link in the description you'll find the link to this page. You can download the game assets here. All the source code, everything is written inside of this tutorial as well. Okay, so once you download it, make sure you extract the zip file. These are the files inside of it. So you have the background image, uh, different balloons, and a pop sound MP3 file. Okay, so to start, let's go and import these assets to the game. So if you right click on the name of the file inside the Solutions Explorer, click on Add, say, New Folder. Call this folder files. You right click on the files folder there, say existing item. Go to your downloads, then you should choose all files from this list because we have an MP3 file as well. So if you just pick images, it's not going to show the MP3. Okay, so I'm just going to highlight all of them, click add, so they'll be added to the project. So I'm going to start on the XAML code. So I'm just going to zoom out of this one a little bit. So I change the title to more ICT. Change the height to 700, no, 600. Change the width to 450. Okay, we can also set the resize mode to can minimize only so that way um, the players can resize the window. Okay, change the grid to a canvas. That's what we're going to be making our game in. Let's give this one a name called My Canvas. Okay, set focusable to true. Let's go and add a mouse left button down event to this canvas. So this one we're going to call Pop Balloons. Okay, and let's give this one a background white. So inside of here we're going to need a, just a label. So I'm going to say font size, okay, set font size to 24. So give this one a name called score text. And content can be score zero. So that's the default with font weight of extra bold. Okay, with that, let's just put a slash there and that should be added. So we don't want the score to be added to the top of the screen. We want it to be yeah at the bottom of the screen. So you can add it to right there. So for now, what we're going to do is right click on the pop balloons, mouse left button down, event there, and then just click on go to definition. So that will add the pop balloon event to the C sharp script. So for now, let's go and make a couple of more uh, functions. So it'll be a start game. And then planet void. And then it's going to be frame it void restart game. And let's go add the threading namespace. We're going to need that for the dispatcher timer. So windows threading. Okay, that's time to add the variables for this game. So first one is going to be the dispatcher timer. Let's call this one game timer. Like so int speed um, it's going to be equal to 3 that's the speed the balloons are going to be going up 
intervals um, equals 90. So uh, that's how often this game is going to be making a new balloon to add to the canvas. So we're just going to be using this to generate a random number for various different purposes. So say list um, little rectangles. Okay. Call this one item remover. Okay, so the balloons that have gone past the top, we're going to add it to this list here and then we'll remove it from the canvas. So let's say image brush um, that's to import and add the background image. So that's going to be used to change the balloon skins. We're going to use the eye to animate the balloons going left and right. And miss balloon. So, so balloon called game is active, so we don't uh, we know when the game is over and when the game is running. In school, and we also need a media player. Let's start adding some information inside the main window constructor. Uh, plus equals to game engine. So we're going to be making a event called game engine. So that's going to be keeping track of all the balloons. Time and interval is going to be equals to time span from from milliseconds set twenty. Now let's set up the background image. There's going to be a new bitmap image here. Let's set up the new URI. And now we can uh, locate where the image is stored because the image is stored inside a folder called files. We'll need to navigate the string to it. But to do that, we we'll have to say pack. In an application, then we'll do three commas here. After that, we'll have access to the files and then say background dash image.jpg. This is a JPG file, just makes you pay extra attention to the extension and any uh, capital letters inside the image name. Right after that, we can say my canvas background equals background image. And so if you hover over the game engine name there, go to show fixes. And then just click on the first one we'll add that we don't need that line we can delete that so inside the main constructor now and just run the restart game function from here let's go and do that function first so in this function we need to run two for each loops so for each variable x in my canvas dot children dot off type so we are interested in any rectangles that exist inside the canvas so if they do we're going to add them to the item remover dot add the next here so now we need to do another for each loop instead of for each loop we go looking for instead of variables we're looking for rectangle so I'll say rectangle y like so in item remover so any rectangle that exists inside of this list can be removed from the canvas. So say my canvas dot children dot remove say y. Okay, so we need to clear off any item that is left inside of here. So clear. It's gonna go reset back to zero and then we'll run the start game function here. So that's it for the restart function. In the start game function we can say game timer dot start list balloons go back to zero score can go back to zero intervals back to 90 game is active is set to true because now the game will be running and then speed is set back to three so restart and the start function is done now we can do the game engine so let's set the score text dot content to score so it shows the most up-to-date score 
on the screen we need to reduce like 10 from intervals because it's at 90 at the moment so we want to spawn objects at certain intervals uh, you can play around with this number to see which one suits your game the most but for this example we just going to leave it at 10 so for the if intervals now is less than one and create a new image brush class here called blue image a new image brush like so blue skins right there and plus equals one so we're going to add one to this integer here okay so now you can say if blue skins is greater than five this is equals to one so because we only have five images for the balloons so we don't need to go beyond that okay so instead of here we can run another switch statement say check for balloon skins number here so if the balloon skins number is one two three or five depending on the number we're going to be able to attach a image to this image brush here and then fill that to the rectangle that we're going to be creating for the balloons Okay, so it's pretty simple. Let's take a look at how it works. Let image dot image source here. Equals to new bitmap image. Just to save time, I can copy and paste that. Okay, and then if you notice that these are PNG images, so balloon one dot PNG, balloon two dot PNG. So we need to make sure that we don't misspell those. Balloon one dot png, and then after the case one, we will need to do a break so it knows when to stop if the condition has met. So I can just copy and paste that. Okay, so let's change that one to two. Change that to two. Change that to three. Change that to three. Four. At four, five, change that to five. So after the switch statement is done, now we can actually create the new rectangle. So remember, we're still inside of the if interval is less than one if statement. Okay, so let's go and say angle here, call it new balloon. Okay, so this rectangle we can directly give it properties inside of the curly brackets there. So what we can say here is tag balloon like that, comma height fifty, comma width fifty, comma again, and then fill equals to balloon image. This is the last one. We don't need to put a comma at the end of it. So it's directly going to link to the balloon image there. So whatever number is attached to that is going to load that image and attach it to the new balloon. Okay, so now we can set the left and top. So the X and Y position of the balloon. Okay, so new balloon. The left is going to be a random number. Let's double next. So it's going to be between say 50 and 400. Okay, and then so set the top to new balloon as well. And this time we can set it to a one number for all of them. So we can just leave your 600 for now and see how that works out. Okay, now let's add that to the my canvas. So now let's new balloon like so. So that would add the object there and then we need to reset the intervals Intervals. next so somewhere between let's say 90 and 150 and so each time we create a balloon so each time it goes below one we do all of the following instructions for it we create a new balloon and then we make a new number for it now we can run a loop so make sure you get out of the if statement so i'm gonna Click away from that. Okay, so now I can create a for each loop here. So variable x in my canvas dot children dot off type looking for rectangles. Okay, rectangle and then in this case I'm looking for if 
string x dot tag equals equals balloon. Okay, because we're creating the new balloons with the tag cool balloon. So in this case, we're gonna say I'm looking for rectangles with the tag cool balloon, right? So if any rectangle that exists with this tag, I should be able to move it up and then move it sideways. So I equals next. So generate two numbers between say minus five and five. Canvas dot set top first. Okay, so this is the idea of moving it up. So x and then say canvas dot get top position of the x as well. And we're gonna be minusing it with the speed variable. Okay, so canvas dot set left x and then we also have to get a canvas to get left as well x so in this case uh, what we're going to do is say minus right i multiplied by minus one so uh, whatever number that is because it's going to be changing constantly between so that's why we want it to sort of be attached to the left position of the balloons um take a look at how it looks now okay so the background is attached balloons are Coming up, right, that's good. As you can see, it does that little bit. That's because of the i variable. Okay, so I think I need to change the size of this from fifty to seventy. Let's see what it looks like now. Okay, that looks much better. It looked a bit squashed before. So at the moment, the balloons are being created, but um, it's not being uh, it's not being removed. So once it reaches the top, it's still in, in the game. So if we left this game running right now, it would use up pretty much all the memories available in this computer at some point, because it will have lots and lots of um, rectangles created and animating them all the way to the top with sort of, you know, infinite numbers at this point. So what we need to do is uh, to make the game more, much more memory efficient, we need to find out um, how far we want the balloons to go and then to remove them once they reach that level. Okay, so to that if statement, let's do another if statement here to say if um can this stuff get top of the x there and if it's less than 20 I want to add it to the item remover. So add x to the item remover there. Okay, and then also we can add that to this balloons integer right now we're inside still inside the for each loop so by adding it to this one it's not going to remove it straight away from the um, canvas so we need to run another for each loop here actually what we can do is we can copy this one it'll be exactly the same and paste in here because it's going to look for rectangles inside that items remover and then it'll just remove that rectangle that it finds any rectangle it finds inside of this one okay, so we said minus 20 so that way we can actually see the balloons being removed from the screen run again so you should hit that line there let's say so as you can see the balloons are being removed now Okay, that looks very nice. Okay then, so now with that being done, we need to actually interact with the balloons. Okay, so let's find the event. Player. Oh, I misspelled that one. Should be player. Okay. Um, oh, here we are. Okay, so what we're doing to is say if game is active so while the game is active while the game is being played only then we want the player to be able to click on the balloons right so we're going to look for if the, the original source is rectangle if we have clicked on a rectangle right so then we're going to be making a local rectangle called let's say active rec equals casting here so 
active directory calls me the original source okay so we're making a local um, rectangle that's just going to save the rectangle information that we have clicked on let's say player to open so we're going to add the mp3 file that we have to the player here you are I. so let's go in there's two folders up so from the debug folder so let's say files dot pop sound oh it's a dash there dot mp3 like so okay then say you are right kind the relative or absolute it's fine okay so got player the open new uri then the link directly to the files folder to the pop sound mp3 file that we have so files and pop sound mp3 file there okay so in this case what we can do here is player dot play okay and now what we'll do is my canvas dot children dot remove now we can remove the active rec that we created there Okay, and now we say score plus equals one. Okay, so right now you should be able to hear the MP3 file playing. So let's go and start that now and let's see how it works. So say at the moment I'm clicking, I can't hear anything. The first one did make a noise. Oh no, okay, I think I made a mistake here. It's not pop sound dash, it's pop sound underscore. So there, yeah, that's why it wasn't making the sound. There you go. So now you can hear the sound being made and the balloons being removed, and we have the score being updated as well. Okay, so under the for each one, let's say here if missed balloons is let's say for example greater than 10. Right, so change game is active to false right game timer stop that there and then we'll show a message box show say game over you missed two balloons then I can say click OK. No, we should do in a new line. So I click OK to play again. Then inside of here, we can run the restart game function. That should restart the thing. So okay, let's just go and do like two for now. Okay, so missed it and then click OK. And it restarts the whole thing again. Okay, nice. Change that back to 10. Right, so also what we can do is we can play around with the balloon speed as well. So say for example if is say greater than 10 all right so then you can set the speed to like seven or something like that so the balloons will go up a bit more so i'm gonna set it to three for now just to test it out okay so okay three and fourth one balloons are now faster uh, so this was the tutorial for wpf and c sharp balloon popping game uh, I do hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you on the next one.